There's a saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. Now since this video is running by at 24 pictures per second, that means you've just seen a novel. Although since it's been the same picture, the novel's a pretty boring one. But I digress. Let's talk about the mathematical equivalent of a picture, the graph of a line. Now remember that any point in the plane can be specified by its coordinates x and y. A graph consists of a set of coordinates. For example, I might try to sketch the graph of the following set of coordinates, 1, 3, 1, 5, and 2, 4. So this first set of coordinates, 1, 3, specifies a point that has x-coordinate 1 and y-coordinate 3. So we'll plot that point, but we'll also label its coordinates, a good habit to get into. Next, I'll sketch the point with x-coordinate 1, y-coordinate 5, and finally the point with x-coordinate 2, y-coordinate 4. Now it's important to understand that because our graph is given as these three points only, then our graph consists of these three points only. Sometimes we have too many points to list them conveniently, and so instead we represent the graph by writing the relation between the x and y values. For example, I might say something like this. Suppose the y values of a point on a graph are three times the x values. First of all, we want to express this as an equation and then find three points on the graph. Since the y values are three times the x values, then whatever the x value is, the y value will be three times that amount. And we can express this as y equals three x. Now to find three points on the graph, what I want to do is I want to find three sets of x and y values. Now I have this relationship y equals 3x. Since this is going to be true for any x value, we can choose any x value that we want. So let's choose how about x equals 0 as an easy value to work with. If x equals 0, then our formula tells us that y is equal to 0. And so the point 0, 0 is on the graph. Well, let's pick another value for x. How about, let's choose x equals 1. If x equals 1, our formula tells us that y is equal to 3. So the point 1, 3 is also on the graph. And if I choose x equal to 2, our formula tells us that y is equal to 6. And so we know the point 2, 6 is on the graph. Now, while we know these three points are on the graph, we don't know if there are any others on the graph. And we could find more by choosing different values of x. And if I were endlessly patient, I could fill in the space between these points with many, many, many more points. But for reasons that won't be clear until you take calculus, we can connect the dots to form a continuous graph. Mathematicians say that the equation y equals 3x corresponds to the curve shown. And it's important to recognize two things. First, mathematicians are not very good at coming up with new and exciting names for things. This is a curve, and there's no real need to call it anything else. And when a mathematician talks about curves, they include things like this straight line. So for example, let's draw the curve corresponding to the equation y equals 5. So again, the equation describes a relationship between the x and y values on the curve. As before, we can pick a value for x and find the value for y. So I'll pick x equals 3 because I like the number 3. Then our formula tells us that y equals 5, so 3, 5 is a point on the graph. I'll pick another value for x. If x equals 10, then our formula tells us that y equals 5. So 10, 5 is a point on the graph. And if y equals, well, why not? Let's use this horrible mess. Then our formula tells us that y equals 5, and so I have a point on the graph. 
After plotting these points, I can connect the dots and carefully label what I've done, which gives me the graph of the equation y equals 5. Now let's pause a moment and think about this process. If we had y equals any other number, we'd still have the same value of y regardless of the x value. And so we'd still get a graph that looks very much like this. And this leads to the following theorem. The graph of y equals c, where c is any constant, is a horizontal line. Let's try another one. How about let's try and graph x equals 3. So as before, we'll try and find pairs of x and y values. So if x equals 2, then our formula says x equals 3, but that's impossible possible because if x equals 2, x can't be 3. And what this says is we can't pick values for x. So we should pick values for y instead. So if y equals 1, then formula says x is equal to 3. And so we know that the point 3, 1 is on the graph. If y equals 5, then x equals 3, so 3, 5 is a point on the graph. And if y equals 8, our formula says that x equals 3, so 3, 8 is another point on the graph. And if we connect the dots, we'll get our continuous curve. And again, if x is equal to any other number, we're going to get a very similar graph. And so this leads to the result the graph of x equal to c, where c is any constant, is a vertical line. And let's pause a moment and see what we've gotten. If y equals c is a horizontal line, and x equals c is a vertical line, then what happens when we have an equation that involves both x and y, like 5x plus 3y equals 15? As before, we'll find some points. But before we proceed, we'll throw down a useful definition and a theorem. The standard equation of a line is ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers. Well, actually, I'm putting Descartes before the course, because we should actually point out that the graph of ax plus by equals c is a straight line. So let's take a look at the graph of 3x plus 5y equals 15. So our definition says that we have the standard equation for a line, and the theorem says that when we graph this, we will actually get a straight line. So from geometry, we know that we only need two points to graph a line, so let's find two points that satisfy this equation. Since we get to pick our x or y values, we want to pick the hardest possible values so that people will marvel at our awesomeness. Or we might actually want to pick the easiest values that we can work with. So we like 0. If x equals 0, then substituting that into our formula gives us an equation that we can solve for y, and we find y equals 5, so 0, 5 is a point on the graph. While we could pick a different value for x and solve for y, we might find it a little bit easier to let y equal 0. So we'll let y equal 0 and substitute that value into our equation, and then solve for x. And if we do that, we find that 3, 0 is also a point on the graph. And because we know that this graph will produce a straight line, we'll draw the straight line running between these two points.